Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. Yesterday I discussed a security flaw in the Google Pixel phone, and I wasn't able to reproduce the security flaw as much as I tried to, even on images that I had created way before there was a fix for it. And I was very curious, why is it I'm not able to reproduce this flaw that everybody else is able to reproduce in their Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro? And the reason apparently is because I'm using Graphene OS. Graphene OS is not the stock Android that comes on your Pixel. It is a hardened version of the Android open source project. So Daniel McKay and the other developers at Graphene OS will take the Android open source project and they'll do a lot of really cool things to it. You get a hardened memory allocator, which is really cool. You get this thing they do with Google Play services and framework. That's the thing I talk about in this video and I link to a study in the description for anybody interested where they are constantly spying on you. There's all these different privacy violations. If you are using stock Android where there's all different types of data collection on you and all sorts of nasty stuff that Google Play services and Google Play framework is given permissions to. On Graphene OS, a, Google Play Services and Framework runs in a sandbox, so it doesn't have access to everything else on your phone the way it does with rampant administrative trusted permissions on standard Android, and B, you get to set the permissions on Google stuff, not Google. So you can say whether Google Play Services and Framework has allowed access to your camera, your sensors, your location data, and everything else, which is really cool. It kind of gives you back the feeling that this is your phone. And the reason that I was not subject to this particular flaw over here they're talking about, where when you crop an image, it still allows you to recover everything that you cropped. So let's say, I don't know, you, you crop out a customer's email when you're making fun of a customer, or you crop out a portion of your credit card information when you're taking a screenshot of something. The reason that you weren't able to recover that from any of the screenshots that I took is because when you take a screenshot on Graphene OS, it is not using the stock standard thing that is used on a Pixel. 6 or a Pixel 6 Pro when you're using standard Android to do it, it's using its own, which in this instance was more secure. And the cool thing about Graphene OS, as I've said many times, this is free. It's very, very easy to install. It's so easy to install this thing using the web installer. Again, you're not doing a bunch of command line nonsense. It's literally, you just plug it in, you run the installer, bam, and it is free and open source, which I think is really cool. As I said in this video I did here, Graphene OS, the greatest mobile OS of all time, and I genuinely believe that to be true. I am making a lot of sacrifices because I don't want to use a Pixel. This only works on a Pixel, but if I'm able to get Graphene OS, I am willing to sacrifice the things that I don't want to sacrifice, like a micro SD card slot or a headphone jack, to know that my phone is running this and not stock standard garbage Android, which is really cool. Now, my boss at Futo gave them a sizable grant a while ago, and to my knowledge, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe they just got a very sizable grant from Jack Dorsey. So they are actually decently capitalized at this point in time. From what I hear, they are looking for more programmers to continue maintaining the operating system, to add features and functionality to the operating system, and also into the future, every single time a new Android version comes out, they have to adapt all the changes that they've made to the new Android version, and all of this takes quite a bit of work. So they've gotten some donations financially, but now what they could really use, from what I read in their matrix room, are more code contributors, more people who are willing to put a full-time level of effort into this particular project, which I find to be an amazing project that, again, is open source and available for free to anybody that wants to use it, which does give you genuine security benefits over stock Android. It is good enough. I've been using this thing for now for about five months, and I have absolutely no regrets whatsoever. The common usability issues that people have, whether it comes to notifications or banking apps or anything else or applications crashing, I went over all of that in this video and how you can fix all that stuff. And a lot of, the, as I said in the title, common usability misconceptions debunked. So it looks like they are looking for more programmers. I'm going to include a link down below to the Matrix Room that has a lot of the developers and a lot of the people that are a fan of the operating system. If you're somebody that thinks that you can make code contributions to it, by all means, talk to a developer, try and work it out amongst yourselves. I really want to see this project succeed because I think it is a genuinely amazing project that makes the experience of using an Android phone that much better. Outside of all the security things that it does, I'll be honest, a bit of why I like it is I like being able to tell Google, hey, this is my phone, not yours. When it comes to Google Play services and framework, there's a lot of stuff like banking apps and Uber and Lyft. There's a lot of stuff that just fundamentally breaks if you're not running Google spyware on your phone. If you want to use your phone and get, you know, 2020's level of functionality on it, you kind of have to be either using an iPhone or use Google Play services and framework on your phone. So the next best thing that you can do is nerf it to the point where it runs just enough that you get your notifications and your banking apps work 
but not enough that it's able to spy on you all the time. And the team at Graphene OS has done an amazing job at making sure that's possible with Sandbox Google Play services and also allowing you to set the permissions on it, reinforcing the idea that this is your phone, not Google's. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something and hopefully there are more people that will be able to help out with this project. I'm glad to see it getting the financial backing that it has earned and deserves. And I hope that they are able to find more programmers and contributors to continue with what it is they're doing here. Because again, I was, I was going back through a lot of my screenshots, to be honest with you, to go, oh my God, how many of these are recoverable? None of them are recoverable because I'm not using stock Google, Android. And that's just, that's just great. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.